you left to prompt me with questions, yeah. that's all. Yeah. <coughs> a central idea in this design and in a number of design, but particularly um, expressed in this project in the, in the house was the Comte de L'Autremont's um, well-known quote, I think it goes something like, beautiful as the chance meeting of a sewing machine and umbrella on a dissecting table. This idea of surrealist juxtaposition directly affected my thinking throughout the design process. We've lived here for 30 years and did not want to move, so when the houses next door became available, we bought them one by one so we could build our new house next door. I began designing the house in about 2011. Um, well, in fact, the, the project uh, is really to build a house for ourselves um, at the rear of a couple of uh, two adjoining sites. <coughs> So there's the two townhouses at the front and then there's that the, a long sort of little um, uh, Valencian patio um, that runs along the side which is access from the street to our house at the rear. And our house at the rear is really an L shape which follows that edge which has an entry, a living, an open living dining area, a kitchen at the sort of um, elbow and then a bedroom and a little workroom and they face onto an outdoor garden area. So, in fact, the building um, is quite free in its ground plane, articulated by the columns, and then those columns actually sort of foreground an open space, a garden area. Since we've lived in St Kilda and Elwood, um, we've actually designed a few projects around in, in, the, in the area. Well, the other projects that, that I've worked on in St Kilda, obviously there's the apartment building called The Face, which is essentially a quite pragmatic uh, apartments on the inside, there's an explicit facade put onto the outside of the building in the shape of Salvador Dali's sleep in profile. And then the face is actually fixed to the front of the building um, like a billboard. Um, you can see the struts behind it from inside and from outside, so you can see that it's specifically put onto the building. Um, the other building is the um, St Kilda Library which is an addition to Enrico Taglietti's 1971 library. And the dumb proposition, the simple proposition, can be quite interesting in the giant book that sits on the front of it, the big stone book, which, you know, alludes to the idea of the death of the book. But the treatise then, from St Kilda's point of view, was really just about this idea of it being an interest in the big thing, you know, the big pineapple, the big, um, you know, these terrible things we must not discuss in architecture. Uh, the, the most banal one, I think, is the big wool bale, I think, is in Horsham, which is just a big brown blob. <laughs> That's quite funny, that one. Whereas the, the, whereas the actual best one, now I'm, now I'm rambling, the actual best one is the Kingston South East giant lobster, which is fantastic. This steel lobster, have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely stunning across the flat landscape of South East and South Australia. <laughs> The house brings together some ideas that have been we're looking at for a while that come out of the idea of the vault and the kind of um, proposition about space that's different to modern open space, the sort of endlessness of space, the Miesian idea of space. And that is a space that's somehow articulated by the things that are in it uh, that give a sense of scale and perspective. So like the space of a hyperstyle hall is quite an interesting space because it's articulated by the grid of columns that are within it. This house is quite different. It's quite a shift, I think, because it, it does take a theme in ARM's work, which is, you know, those things of the cave, the maze and the vault, those spatial types that we use, even though we hardly ever discuss it. I think they're kind of typologies, but they're also sort of metaphorical. If you look at things like um, Story Hall, clearly the cave, 
this proposition about the cave, which is also present in the recital centre. Um, it's also present in the um, MTC theatre with its lit walls. So there's this sort of idea about the interior quality actually feeling like you are inside something. Um, and if you look at other, I, I, if I look at other people's work or other auditoria, you don't get that sense. But they don't have this sense of you being in an entity. Um, and that's quite a strong thing in our work. The salon is the same. The vault is this idea of being under things. So l likewise in the, in the um, recital centre, when you enter, you come in under the, the giant concrete legs of the front moulding. And you have this sense of actually coming in under something. So the, that's sort of thematic and it's in Hamer Hall as well as when you come into the Riverside um, entry. I think you also have it in the front of Story Hall, um, in the interstitial space between the, the, um, the front facade. You get this sense of you're actually in, um, and, and both Story Hall, the recital centre and the shrine is probably one of the strongest ideas about the vault and being inside this thing and we're kind of exploited the fact that there was already a, a vaulted space there or a, a, an interior space there that was underneath the shrine and use that as our main entry access. So this interest in these spaces, uh, I know I've forgotten to mention that the maze is the other one. If you look at the actual planning structure of a lot of our buildings, they are actually paths that wind back on themselves and this, the sense of sequencing is like a maze. So this it's the opposite to the idea of um, if you go to, say, Denton Corker Marshall's um, Melbourne Museum, which is no maze quality to that at all. It's like the giant open space, like a big airport. And a lot of contemporary buildings are like that. Um, or they're, um, they're structured by a sort of grid of, of spaces, um, like Sean Godsall's um, hub, which is it's not a maze so much as a system that operates through the building. So a lot of our buildings actually use this technique as a part of a party, um, the maze to the cave or the, the vault that allows you to go through the building that then a sense of arrival as you go past the vault. Um, so these sort of spatial qualities I think are quite interesting and um, just looking back on the work and seeing these themes, I've just started to think about what that can possibly mean and how they can be used. And it did come about from actually starting to design the house and thinking actually this is a quite an interesting theme, I'll explore it and then looked at the other buildings that we'd done and saw these patterns of those spatial types, um, which seemed to strike a chord against the, the, the modernist line on space. We began building in late 2014. slabs were poured in July 15. Columns were all formed up in September 15. Board columns were then stripped in November 15. First floor was pretty well all complete in July 16. So, so this idea of the sort of space made by the hyperstyle hall, and it's kind of like the idea, I worked on a house in um, Dalesford where there was an, it was on a very steep slope, so you kind of articulated a lower level and an upper level, of which both could be at ground level. So the lower level could actually be a basement, even though on one side it's actually ascending. And then the, the level above is on ground level, but from from below it looks like another world. So this idea of sort of Laputa, the sort of flying world, the, the world in the sky, 
um, creates a sense of under, being under something and being over something. So it was an experiment in this idea of space rather than it just being inside and outside, it's actually under and over. So the vault actually uh, expresses that and there's, um, that was kind of experienced when we were doing Hamer Hall. So the articulation of Hamer Hall with that long section along the river, which when, even though you're at the river edge, when you go in, you're actually underground um, and you're inside the hall. So this proposition about interiorness, um, I thought maybe it was a good exploration for the way that you could make a, a place to live in. The village is a bit of a nod and a bit of an homage to Peter Corrigan and his, um, his influence on my work. So the space is essentially this loose field of columns that are uh, conical and they ascend to a, a concrete plane which could be seen to be something that you are underneath. And then above that is this little, this other thing which in the, out, the first floor is essentially kind of a, if you look at Renaissance painting, they had a technique to make it appear as though there was a village off in the distance on a hill by a multiple perspectival structure. And so um, essentially the, the, the house comprises those two spatial experiences, the, the, the vault and then above it the, vi the, the village beyond, um, the cabin on the hill. So that's kind of the conceptualisation of the, of the building. The, the village on the hill has got a number of perspectival points that make it appear as though it's a sort of a, um, a collision of, of um, little, little huts. Um, there is a proposal that we actually put one out into the garden. I'm not sure whether to do that. It seems so, kind of a folly, but then maybe follies are good. Column moulds were fibreglass forms. They're a parabolic cone um, with a smooth transition from a circle up to a square. It's really, it really is a, to attempt to um, get the sense of spatial distance. So from inside, the columns articulate the space and then go beyond the curtilage of the building and certainly beyond the enclosure. So there's a quite a deep uh, verandered area that the columns go out into and then a distance from that. And then also when you're out in the space, the vista back is to the village on the top. So um, it's actually to get a sense of um, a perspectival um, space. Um, the block is quite small, so to put a pavilion in that would, would have meant that the spaces around it would be quite small. So in a way, you are the, the, um, the design problem is to make a sense of spatiality in quite a small block and to do that you kind of need something that hugs the edges so you can get away from it so you can see it. So it's a little like, um, it's not quite a stage set but it's, it's quite a, uh, an element that has distance via the fact that it hugs the edges of its perimeter. But it's much less um, a proposition about the image and it is much more of um, images and recollections kind of fleeting it looks like this and it looks like that rather than it is this it's a lot freer the new house is a lot freer there's a kind of intrigue about that the space of the vault and it is a medieval and then um, you know um, an experience of space that is is compressed and trapped so it is actually an experiment in the idea of that sort of space. Now, that's not to say that those spaces don't exist in, in modernism, and um, there's a fantastic um, conical columned car park in um, Frank, Lloyd, Frank Lloyd Wright's Johnson Wax, which is hardly ever photographed. Um, so this, but it's the opposite to this idea of the modern where it's always open and light. So it is a bit of a proposition about you know, it's, you wouldn't want to say it's monastic, but it's certainly um, part of that sort of tradition, the sort of underneath the church, the vaulted. It is a proposition that is not commonly dealt with in, in um, modernism. Maybe Kahn, I mean, Kahn was kind of very strongly interested in that idea of the massive and the, um, and the sense of um, um, something that's ancient. And that's, that is kind of what um, 
that's a small part of what the, what the design is about. Duchamp's first ready-made, which was the bicycle and it's stuck into, grafted onto the stool, was a useful diagram for the way of working within this design. So for the house, the idea of the ready-mades were the two different spatial types, the village floating above and then the, uh, the vaulted area, a sort of underneath area, and this was this sort of surrealist juxtaposition. Actually in ARM's work, Duchamp always comes up in, dis in the discussion of the propositions, um, the found object. The found object is critical, um, and the translation of the found object into something else. Um, in the recital hall, the use of the giant styrene mould that then becomes this monumental, you know, neo-monumentalism on the front of the, of the recital hall. The found object, whether it be the architectural um, icon or whether it be the sort of discarded element, both are significant in our work. They constantly get um, brought in, reworked, discussed. So it is a quite an important aspect to our work. Okay. Yep. That um, thing about Duchamp's um, ideas also relate to the discarded, the elements that are, um, are interesting because people th believe that they're abject or um, can't be dealt with. So you get uh, an architectural firm like Holger and Holger who've done amazing things, who um, were shunned by serious architects, in fact called vulgar and vulgar. Um, and I've always thought their work is pretty amazing, so that also draws into the tradition for this building. So as a prototype, a sort of found object for the idea of the vault, we've always been intrigued by the Melbourne University car park. And if you juxtapose that with Jonathan Swift's Laputa, the sort of land in the air, that's the two that are brought together. Melbourne University car park is really a hyperstyle hall below and then above a garden, which is a good uh, metaphor. And that's got that, like it's a highly contemporary proposition and yet it feels as though, you know, it's 500 years old. So that, that idea of you, you go in underneath, there's the car park and these very beautiful columns, the space is completely articulated by the columns. Then when you're outside, actually up on top is the garden. So it's this sort of fantastic split, kind of symbolic split between the garden, the sort of um, Eden on the top, and kind of uh, the qualities of the underworld underneath it, which is quite an interesting thing. Don't mention that quality to Jill. <laughs> She's already worried it's about that. I don't want it to feel like an office building or a um, some sort of car park. Oh, the upstairs is like, you know, cabins. Yeah. You know, cosy cabins compared to the bottom, which is, you know, like the car park. So it's... You, you, you can't go wrong with that formula. <laughs> car park and cosy cabins. <laughs> Anything that starts with C. <laughs> um, the mobile. The mobile station is like that. So the building began in late 2014. Um, it took about 24 months to build and we reached practi practical completion in December 2016. I think even the um great entry hall to um, in the National Museum is, is cave-like in that way, but it's giant.
The landscaping then began in January, late January 17, and it took really till August 17. more wallpaper these days. The trend is to wallpaper. <laughs> so this building then allowed me to, to realise it in the subterranean and the village. And um, the village is the exact opposite to, in a, in a pictorial way, to the platform that's below, which is vaguely abstract and monumental. And the village is this sort of um, cartoon of a of a home. We're really 19th century architects um, stuck in the 20th century or the 21st century. I think just thinking about the work over the years and looking back on the, the sort of re, uh, resonating themes that run through all of the work, it's quite interesting to think that most, uh, our position has been always about contending with the principles of modernism and the position of modernism and that idea of a globalised, unified, aesthetic or strategic way of doing architecture, which tends to eliminate all other voices. Um, and w I guess what we've been always trying to think about is um, and trying to get into the work is that to open that up to a whole lot of things about difference, a whole lot of things about the voices that people won't listen to, but that are overruled by what modernism seemed to stand for. The use of the base being made out of cream concrete and the top being bright red. These sort of juxtapositions that you know, cultures can live next door to each other and be you know, joined by proximity. We sleep downstairs and visitors can sleep upstairs in the village. <laughs>